promise of light in the time of darkness. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3. It says, The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Folks, you and I, we are living in a time of encroaching darkness. Jesus warned us about these days. A time when there's, and you can see it now in society, there's a sudden turning in the hearts of society at large against the testimony of Jesus Christ and the people of God. It's a time of darkness. It's a season that's going to get worse. It's going to get progressively worse as the days go forward. I've shared with this church before that I personally believe that we are somewhere midway between persecution and prosecution for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Things are going to radically change in this world. They are now. It's accelerating very, very quickly. But God promises light in a time of darkness, promises that we will have a light for our feet and a lamp for our path, that we will have a song that's not going to be extinguished, and that the light within us will actually burn brighter as the days grow darker. But in order to do this, we're going to need the life of Christ. You see, your courage and mine will fail. Your sincerity, as meaningful as it might be, is not going to get you through these days we're about to face. You and I need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the grace of God alive within us. We need to be unashamed to cry out, even if we have to cry like the blind man on the side of the road. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. We need an infilling of the Holy Spirit like we've never needed before. We need the strength of God to be the testimony of God in this generation in which we find ourselves living. But the scripture tells us that there's a certain integrity that is required of those who profess to know Jesus Christ. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. And so there's a question that needs to be answered. Now, I'm speaking to you as a pastor who cares. I care about you. I care about your your future. I care about whether or not you're going to have strength to face these days that we're living in. I, I care about your ultimate destination. Where are you going to end up in eternity? And if I didn't, I wouldn't speak these words, but I'm speaking them because I care. I care more about where you're going to end up in eternity than being popular standing in this pulpit. I care about you. I care about your soul. I want you to know that. But how honestly are you dealing with the cross of Jesus Christ? This question must be answered, and it has to be answered now because the darkness of this world is going to spiral down into lawlessness and confusion. A time that Jesus himself depicted where people who thought they had light for their future found out that they didn't. He was asked in the Gospel of Matthew, what are going to be the signs of the end days? In Matthew chapter 24, talks about nation rising against nation, false prophets, etc., etc. But Matthew chapter 25, he talks about a separating that's going to happen among those who professed to know God. They went to church. They, they, they had a measure of light. But when the darkness came and this, this season that just is going to announce or be a herald of the coming of Christ, they thought they had light only to find out that their lamps had gone out. They really didn't have light at all. I want to suggest to you they never really had the ability to provide light and if they did have it, it was only momentary. Many, many people come to the house of God and they have light. We see it here Sunday night. Testimonies are given. The gospel is preached and people sit here and they say, oh, surely this must be true. Surely Jesus must be the Christ. Surely he must have died for my sins. And they, they get out of their seat and they come down to an altar. And it's, it's, but it's only a momentary thing. They've experienced something in their own natural emotions, but they've never been able to make the bridge or, or make that final step into the life that is offered to them through Jesus Christ. Paul says the last days will be characterized by many people who have a form of godliness, but no evidence in them of the power of God and the change that that life brings. Remember, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature. Behold, the old things are passed away and all things have become, have become new. If I am in Christ, if Christ is in me, I should be able to say to you and you should be able to say to me, behold, in other words, look at my life. Yeah, I'm not everything. I, I, I'm not everything yet that God wants me to be. But like Paul, the apostle said, I'm leaving behind that which needs to be left behind. And I'm pressing forward to the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
But behold, that's what a testimony is. A testimony is not just a, a, a verbal declaration of the memorization of some principles of Scripture. A testimony is something visible. Behold, Christ is in me. The hope of God's change, the hope of my glory, everything, the hope of God's glory in me is Christ in me. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.